Eight o'clock as a central Kentucky family prepares to bury a murdered police officer. There are several ways for you to show your support. How family and friends are pulling for a central Kentucky paramedic critically injured in a crash. And Kentucky Governor-elect Matt Bevin talks with WKYT about his plans for taking office. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hope your Sunday's off to a great start. I'm Sean Moody. Good morning there. I'm Michelle Chamberlain, and it's cold outside. We stepped outside this morning, and I thought, I need my winter coat. Yeah, it's about that time. The, the breath is starting to show up in yeah. the air when you're, when you're out there. I guess we can't escape it forever. But let's check in with Mike Linden, because it sounds like that's not going to be the case all week long. Well, Sean, once you start seeing Christmas decorations in stores, that's when the cold uh, really starts to get going, and you can truly feel it outside this morning. It's Big Blue Nation across the bluegrass here with temperatures in the lower 40s and mid to high 30s. One of the coldest spots out there, Mount Sterling, Montgomery County at 36 degrees. And notice that quite a few spots are sitting in the 30s this morning. It's not just Montgomery County. We're looking at Madison County, Laurel County, Boyle County as well. If you have to be outside through the early morning hours, if you're heading to church or just getting grocery shopping done early this morning, just be sure to grab that jacket before heading outside. Notice the cloud cover is starting to peel away as well, drying out a little bit, and that's going to make things feel colder, at least for the next hour or so. But looking ahead here, as far as my forecast goes, heading into this work week, things are about to get active to say the least. Today looks like the last quiet day of the bunch and coming up I'll take you hour by hour and show you what to expect leading us through the work week ahead of us. All right, Mike, thank you. Tough story coming up. Tough few days here in Madison County. Communities across the bluegrass are continuing to find ways to honor that fallen Richmond police officer. Yeah, Officer Daniel Ellis died Friday morning, days after being shot in the line of duty. There will be a special service to honor Officer Ellis this morning. His upcoming visitation and funeral will impact schools in Madison County. WKYT's Mike Byer is live in Richmond with our top story. Good morning, Sean and Michelle. After the tragic death, of police officer Daniel Ellis. The Richmond community only seems to be getting stronger and continues to show their utmost support, which you can see right here. His cop car is just full of items from people that he made a huge impact on. It continues to sit out front of the Richmond Police Department. Now, this morning at 9, Eastside Community Church will be holding a prayer service in honor of Ellis. Also, many businesses continue to show their support. Through Monday, Jackson's Restaurant on South 3rd Street is offering free meals for any law enforcement serving the Richmond area. Excel Gymnastics is donating all proceeds from this weekend's open gyms to the officer's family. Sexton and Sons Moving and Storage is taking donations this weekend for the family as well. Now, because of the huge impact that Detective Ellis made during his seven years on the police force, all Madison County schools, including EKU, will be closed on Wednesday which is when his service will be held. I'll have the details on how you can pay your respects coming up at 8.30. In Richmond, Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, thank you. And of course, it's not just in Richmond where people are honoring Officer Ellis. Police and first responders gathered in Irvine on the steps of the courthouse last night to pray for their fallen brother. Uh, when we kiss our wives or husbands, kids, when we go out the door, they don't know if we're coming back or not. We mentioned visitation for Officer Ellis is Tuesday at 2 at the EKU Coliseum. His funeral will be Wednesday morning at 11, also at EKU. We've got the details and complete coverage of this story over at WKYT.com. The man accused of killing Officer Ellis is expected to be in court tomorrow. Raleigh Sizemore is charged with murder of a police officer. He was shot by a second officer after police say he shot Ellis Wednesday on Ballard Drive in Richmond. Sizemore also faces two counts of attempted murder of a police officer. He and three other people connected to the case will be arraigned tomorrow. Gregory Ratliff is charged with complicity to attempted murder of a police officer. Rita Creech and Carl Banks are charged with robbery after police say they were involved in an attempted robbery that occurred earlier in the day and led officers to Ballard Drive. A paramedic is still in the hospital after a terrible accident in Jesmond County. At last check, John Mackey was still listed in critical condition. He was hit by a car Thursday night in downtown Nicholasville. There will be a prayer vigil for Mackey tonight at 5 o'clock outside the Jesmond County Courthouse. 
We've learned this morning that a high school student was killed in a crash in Powell County. A coroner says the truck crossed the center line of old Highway 15 on Friday evening, and the passenger side of that truck was hit by an oncoming car. That crash killed the passenger in the truck, 15 year old Jaron Reed, who was a student at Powell County High School. Both drivers were also injured. Terrible story there. Now, police are investigating a violent robbery in Franklin County. Deputies say a man with a gun got into Zaxby's on Versailles Road through a back door. Police say he held an employee at gunpoint and stole cash and the clerk's cell phone. Governor elect Matt Bevin is a guest on this weekend's edition of Kentucky Newsmakers. During an interview with WKYT's Bill Bryant, Bevin said he's working to put together a transition team to help him take office in January. The Republican also addressed his plans to dismantle Connect and to change how marriage licenses are issued here in Kentucky. We'll hear from Bevin on Kentucky Newsmakers later on WKYT this morning. Was not pretty on the football field it was yesterday. Not. No, Patrick Tolles and the UK Wildcats were just dogged by Georgia's defense. Yeah, and it's too bad. Kentucky dropped its fourth game in a row Saturday in Athens. Now, Coach Mark Stoops is talking about changing quarterbacks. WKYT's Lee K. Howard is in our studio with more. After dropping three straight in the SEC, Kentucky faced the tall task of going on the road to face Georgia Saturday, then Kentucky's struggles would continue. Three turnovers, including Patrick Toll's two interceptions, the Wildcats managed only 180 total yards. And after the game, Mark Stoops said the depth chart would be reevaluated at all positions, including quarterback. Took a pretty good beating uh, by Georgia. Very good football team that uh, had their backs against the wall and responded much better than we did. Um, give them credit. They beat us. Made it very difficult for us to move the football and uh, really didn't play good enough on any side to win. Tough loss there for the Wildcats. Now just three games left on the schedule, beginning with next Saturday's trip to Nashville to face Vanderbilt. Guys? All right, Lee K, thank you. It's 8.07 on your Sunday morning, and we are just getting started here. That's right. Donald Trump returned as a host of Saturday Night Live, but the presidential hopeful's appearance was met with some protests. Grab those light jackets before heading out. It is chilly outside this morning. Coming up, I'll take you through the rest of Sunday and show you what lies ahead for the next few days.